Is what I'm currently doing or about to do going to positively impact me tomorrow? I think if this question got asked more often in our climbing lives, we could just about put the entire rehab industry out of business. There's going to be three parts to this video, which for me are kind of like the three main parts of the injury recovery process road, whatever you want to see it as. Number one is the self-assessment as to how or why an injury has happened in the first place. Number two is getting a medical diagnosis from a professional that knows what they're talking about. And number three is about how to stay motivated, keep a positive attitude and get ourselves back to 100% as soon as possible. There's a million different ways that we can injure ourselves but I think essentially they all fall into three different categories which essentially are underpinned by one main thing which is we've put a stress through our body that it wasn't quite ready for. The first is an acute strength overload injury which maybe is from not having warmed up properly and then we're pulling onto a hard boulder or a hard move or maybe our foot has slipped off and then we've like twang, just not ready for putting all of that load through one ring finger. The second I would call an acute quantity overload injury. So that could be at the end of a massive bouldering session with your mates at the climbing gym and you want to get that one last yellow done before you pack your bags up for the evening and your whole body's just a bit fatigued. You don't have that like tension and spring there. You roll across into that Gaston move and nothing's quite ready to hold in the correct position and then you've done a shoulder. And then the third is more of a chronic fatigue injury over a long period of time. So this could be over a training cycle or a couple of months or even a year. And this generally comes down to not having enough recovery in between sessions and constantly pushing and pushing and pushing and not giving our body an opportunity to actually just get back to a point where it's like, yeah, sweet. No, I feel good again. I'm ready to go back to that homeostasis state. And I guess the fourth would be like a impact or fall injury. So if you're doing a high ball boulder, come down, land on the pads funny and roll an ankle or you fall off and hit a ledge while you're sport climbing or something like that. Like it's a bit more of a kind of, let's say random injury, but there's also a lot to be learnt from them as well. So once we are injured, it's important to work out why or how this happened and where does it fall in those three to four different things that I've just mentioned. In hindsight, could I have seen this coming? Has this happened to me before? And can I prevent it in the future? So perhaps if we keep tweaking our shoulders, is there a movement thing that we keep on doing or do we need to add a little bit more strength? Do we need to become more diligent in our warmups? Or do we need to know when to let go? I can't tell you the amount of people that I know, myself included, that don't know when to actually just let go and leave it be. Or if we've hurt ourselves from one of those kind of impact fall injuries, do we need to have a better conversation with our belayer as to the nature of the falls on this trad route? Do we need to get better pads? Do we need to set them up a little bit better? We really want to be thinking about what we can learn from this situation and using it as an opportunity to become better and smarter. There's no point in continuing to get stronger and stronger and stronger if we're not going to get cleverer as well. We want to become a more well-rounded climber than we were last year and that is with our smart approach as well. There's enough really strong and not so clever athletes out there. Footy players, for example. <laughs> I'm joking, I do like footy, but just low blow. I really like to keep a training diary for this because not only does it kind of keep a track of like, oh, when I did that hard route, this is what it looked like in the months leading up to it. But when we get injured as well, quite often when we dig in there, there's gonna be quite a few clues that seem quite obvious that we just totally missed at the time. It's also really important to have a look outside of the immediate climbing load that we're putting on ourselves. Things like, are we rested enough, having enough sleep, hydration, fueling and recovery with food, that sort of thing work stress, family stress, all of these things compound. We're not just climbing in a vacuum with everything else off to the side. It's really important that it becomes a holistic view. 
Something I endeavor to do before each training session is to do a bit of a self-assessment as to how ready I feel for a session. This can be written down in your training notebook or just a notes app on your phone and just see where you're at. If I'm at a nine out of 10, like sweet, I'm feeling really good, ready to go, zippy, like this is gonna be a good session. But if we're tracking this and it's declining down to a seven, six, five, it's like, okay, at this point, I either need to skip this session, change the input, maybe even think about taking a week or two off and get myself just fully back and recovered because you will get down to that five or four and end up injuring yourself if you continue. One of the hardest things for me to do is to say, no, I'm not going to do this session. We need to think of the climbing progress over months and years and not session to session. So be comfortable with saying, I'm not quite feeling it today. I'm going to pull it back by half or even just can the session. So now it's time for you to go and get a proper medical diagnosis of your injury. Please don't go and do your own research and work out that, yep, yeah, I've just done a little labrum tear and I need to do these little band exercises because that's what this blog said. It may be that that injury has happened due to an imbalance across your entire like upper chain and you're just gonna fix that one little bit there but not realize that there is a bigger global picture that's going on that is just not balanced and working properly. And actually what you're gonna do is just re-injure that which is just back to step one and we've not become a smarter climber. So I've just been editing all that footage and realized that I didn't mention one of the most important parts of the recovery process and that is to track your progress through your exercises or whatever it is that you're doing. Maybe that's the amount of load that you can now put through the joint or the muscle or whatever it is or the amount of pain that you get when you're doing a specific exercise. It may seem like really small steps and so I think that it's important to look at it over the course of a few months and realize that, wow, I've gone from like a five out of 10 pain and now I'm down at a three out of 10. This is feeling really good and it just acts as a bit of a motivator for what can often seem like quite a long road to recovery. And as hard as it may seem, and I'm definitely guilty of this at times, let's not get back into it two weeks too early. Because if you have just gone through three or four months of rehab and then you've come back two weeks too early and just pushed it that little bit too far, far out, suddenly you're back maybe two or three months and now you've been out for nearly six months because you couldn't just sit on your hands for a moment and just take it easy. Again, ask yourself, will this make me better for tomorrow? If you have found this video useful so far, I'd really appreciate it if you could woohoo, hit the like button and it helps it spread her out to more people. and lets me know what it is that people are enjoying and I can make more videos on that sort of thing if people are finding it helpful. Now, perhaps the biggest thing in all of this is how do we keep sane while we're injured and we can't do the thing that we love to do. Now, if the nature of your injury isn't too severe and maybe you could do a little bit more climbing because that's what your medical professional has told you you're able to do, then go for it. But again, don't push it too much. Don't tempt fate on that finger. Two weeks, like just, just chill. As much as possible, I would say that it's important to try and maintain as much of your climbing strength as possible. Obviously, there's going to be a bit of a decline in all of it because of the specificity of climbing. You can't really get that elsewhere, but chucking in a little bit of deadlifting or some TRX type stuff, maybe a little bit of chin ups, but don't get too excited. Do you actually need to take some time off and actually just chill out and recover because your injury has come about due to six months of froth and psych and actually just not resting and maybe taking a couple of weeks off is what you really do need. Obviously, we don't want to overdo it on the strength stuff and it's really important to keep in mind that if we've been off climbing for a while and we've been doing a lot of hard strength work, that when we do get back into climbing, we need to not forget that we've been putting our body under all of that stress already and maybe we've been back climbing for three months and oh, it's only been climbing for three months but we've done a really solid block of six months of strength work. So it's important to not separate those two and see the accumulative load on our body. So at the moment, I've got a couple of finger tweaks that have kept me from going at 100% with my climbing and I've used it as an opportunity to explore other hobbies and sports. And I've gotten into trail running recently and it's been so much fun. And probably two months ago, if you'd told me that I'd be running five times a week and have signed up for four ultra trail running races, 
I'd have called you insane, but here I am absolutely loving it and using it as an opportunity to do one of the things that kind of actually have always wanted to do, but because of climbing, it's never been as high a priority, but now with that free time, it's actually been really fun and I'm really loving it. And it's just this great opportunity for me to point all of the energy that I've got toward climbing that I can't unload and I can just go running and just have that same feeling of like, oh yeah, that was really fun. I enjoyed that two hours. If you wanna know how I fit my training into an 84 hour work week, you can check out this video right here. Or if you wanna see what it looks like to try and climb one route over the course of seven years, you can check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here. We'll see you next time.